Hi, Martin here. Today I want to talk to you about some of the problems I've been having doing a uh, rear axle swap. Running into quite a few issues, you know, it's uh, always something. And what I got here is the rear axle out of a 2000 Dodge Durango RT. 392 gears, track lock, and I've done the disc brake conversion on it. I got that complete. That uh, it had its own issues, that's for sure. Well, then I had the spring perch issue as far as the Durango and Dakotas have a one inch difference in width. Okay, so I weld them on and I put them at the same angle the Durango had them at. Assuming that I could just put them in the Dakota and everything's going to line up nicely, you know, the pinion angle would be just fine. Big mistake. Especially even though this came out of a four-wheel drive Durango and I'm putting it in a four-wheel drive Dakota, the spring perches are, or not the perches, excuse me, the mounts for the leaf springs on either end, you know, the front or the back ones, are in different locations from a two-wheel drive to a four-wheel drive. And on a four-wheel drive, they put the front one down further and the back one has a where the the shackle is upward facing upward and you'll see that uh, on a lot of trucks uh, typically and then on the two-wheel drive Dakotas it's facing downward what you'd see mostly in cars so it changes the pinion angle and I didn't take that into consideration. So I already had this installed in my Dakota and I could see it right away. The pinion angle is, I mean this, the pinion was literally kind of pointing down toward the ground. I mean not literally, but you could see it. And so I had to pull it back out again and I gotta change the angle. It's got, I'm talking about six to seven degrees off. That's considerable. So, I mean, I got to make it right. I was hoping to get this whole project done this weekend, and it's, it's just not going to happen. So, what I'm going to show you here, and I just wanted to put it out there that, you know, don't assume, which I did a lot on this particular project, and uh, finding a lot of things that are wrong. Like, for instance, these uh, mounts for the sway bar. Now I knew they were in a different location compared to the Dakota and Durango, but I thought I could make a Durango sway bar work in the truck, and I think it, I, it could have made it work, but the bump stops, once I got it in there, I realized they're coming down right here, catching this edge. So there's no way it's gonna work. So I gotta cut these off as well, and then move them in the, where they need to be for the Dakota. So there's that too. All right, well, let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these mounts off. I have to cut the perches off again and get them in the correct angle. And we'll see how it goes, all right? Let's get started. Got that side broke loose pretty quick. Oh. 
I'm getting better at this. I actually did a pretty good job cutting those off. You just got to clean it up a little bit right in here. And that'll be good. All right, I got the uh, perch all cleaned up and I got it set at uh, 6.9 degrees. And that is with the pinion uh, at zero. That seems like a lot. And I, that's what I, I mean, I literally think that's how much I was off by. Well, I was off by at least five degrees. But um, I'm gonna just tack weld this into place and remove the other one, do the same thing, get it set at the exact same degrees, of course. And then I'm just gonna like, I'm just tack weld in it this time. I'm gonna get it installed into the truck and then compare it to the output shaft of the transmission. Get that angle and make sure that the yoke angle is the same. It's got to be parallel. Even if one's up here and the other one, you know, so they're pointing like that. And then you got your drive shaft in between. You got your angle here. Um, all right, so get the spot well. Okay, with the uh, purchase tack welded in place, um, what I made here is a lifting fixture for the rear axle. And man, am I so glad I made this. It works out really super well, makes it very easy to take the axle in and out. Now, because I'm going uh, over the leaf springs, and there's one spring I, that I could only drop from the back. The other one I actually had to literally drop from the front because of the exhaust system was in the way, and I did not feel like dealing with that rusty exhaust system, that tailpipe, trying to break that free. Now, what I can do is spin this, like so. Drive it right in here. Lift it up a little bit. Just like that. Now turn it the way I want it. Like that. Okay, now we can raise it up. Sure, be nice on the really heavy axles, like one ton and three quarter ton axles. And as you can see, now it'd be easy to reinstall the leaf springs. All right. Nice thing about this is it can really raise it way up there, up, you know, even higher than you really need it to. Of course, that depends how high you raise the truck. But it is going to probably sit about right at that height right there when it's uh, with full load on it. Okay, with the U-bolts installed, now I can go ahead and raise it up and get uh, the full weight of the vehicle on here and figure out my pinion angle if I'm good or not. To be honest with you, it looks like I need another couple degrees, but we'll see. Definitely looks like I need a couple more degrees. I can already tell from back here.
Sure enough, I was positive uh, 2.2 degrees. Now this what I'm showing you here. I removed the axle, added 4.4 degrees to it, and I ended up with 2.1 degrees to the negative. So there we have it. Okay, finally got them all welded in, solid, and where they belong. Uh, this has been quite a project. As my uh, neighbor just mentioned, you call it a pain in the rear end. Uh -huh. Haha. <laughs> and, uh, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Found it helpful and informative, and if you did, I sure appreciate the thumbs up. And if you never subscribed to me before, please hit that subscribe button right down there and that little bell symbol right next to it. And I'm also an Amazon affiliate. Please check out the in the description below where you'll find Amazon links to products and tools I used in the video. And you can do all your Amazon shopping through one of those links. And that helps out the channel financially. I sure appreciate that. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, rear end painted up here and get it put into the truck. That's going to be in the next video. And there's a lot of helpful information there. So please join me in that next video and uh, wish me luck. <laughs> All right, we will see you on the next one.